on a dime, 150 feet to the bottom of Lake Washington. As Kyra Evans, Dave Wagner discovered, there is an underwater museum being curated by Seattle divers and photographers. It is water that hides secrets more than a century old. The water is very cold. A deep water plunge to a place few have seen. Extremely dark. Divers documenting history. It's absolutely like a museum. It's like a very dusty museum. Before it disappears. Nothing lasts forever. 9 a.m. aboard the hat trick. The team from Global Underwater Explorers in Seattle is preparing for 45 degree water at a depth of 150 feet. Today, divers Case Beamster Leverance and Alex Adolfi are headed to an underwater graveyard okay, guys, pool's open. in Lake Washington, where old boats and tugs that are in extremely good shape from the late 1800s and the 1900s, coal carts, and they still have the coal that was loaded into them by somebody in the 1800s, and aircraft have come to die. It's sort of a graveyard of our history over the past 100, 150 years in Seattle. In the mid-1950s, traffic was a breeze in Seattle. But five miles north of downtown, Sandpoint Naval Air Station was a busy place. And on the weekends, it was a training place. On August 26, 1956, the pilot of a P-4Y bomber forgot to set the flaps that allow the plane to get airborne faster. The plane only got about two feet off the runway and shortly after takeoff, crashed. The bomber quickly sank to the bottom of Lake Washington. The front of the airplane sank really quick, and it took probably maybe two minutes for the whole thing to go down. All 11 people on board escaped. And the whole thing was adrenaline, you know, it just happened so quickly. Including a 20-year-old radar operator named John Madden. It was a great experience to at least be able to live through something like that. Most people wouldn't. I've had this now for... 63 years. Was yeah. that the jacket? That you was the jacket I wore. On that day. On that day. Yeah. yeah. Madden is now 82 years old. How lucky were you that day? Damn lucky. Damn lucky. Because if we had flipped over, none of us would have got up. Well, here's the lake. Here's the 520 bridge. Mm -hmm. On this day, for the first time in 63 years. So there's an Avenger there. There's your bomber. John is on a boat directly above the bomber he escaped. That's the airplane. So we're right on top of the airplane right now. As divers swim 150 feet to the bottom, John reminisces on deck. It just seems like yesterday. About the day he almost died. It was kind of deja vu. You know, I uh, didn't know the exact location of the aircraft. It's strange to feel that something you were on 63 years ago is down there and you came out of that. The bomber John escaped is in remarkably good shape. This airplane in Lake Washington is far and away the best preserved example that I've ever seen. Both of the wings are still attached. The tail section is attached. You can read the serial number. When you talk about well-preserved, how surprised were you to find out that John over here was still alive? <laughs> um, I was shocked. Case and other photographers have taken thousands of photographs of this bomber from every possible angle. I've been on this wreck in particular around 30 times. We took about 3,800 photos. Those photos are stitched together using a software program. You can see that hatch right there. To create a high resolution 3D model. Each one of these little squares is an image that we took to create the 3D model. There it is. Six decades after it sank, John is getting an up close look at the bomber. So the guns are still in the turrets. The guns in the front and the stern are still in the turrets. While Seattle has undergone a dramatic transformation since John Madden's near-death experience in 1956. What lies at the bottom of Lake Washington remains virtually unchanged. It's really like a time capsule when you go down there. And two men, diver and aviator. I've never seen that before. Generations apart. One, two, three. It's just like exploring outer space because, you know, no one knows what's there. Hope to preserve history for generations to come. But nothing survives forever underwater.
By day, Case is a software developer at Microsoft, so he knows a thing or two about creating these 3D models. But he makes it clear the technical diving and underwater photography are part of a team effort with global underwater explorers. Dave Wagner, Cairo 7 News.